Hello and welcome to episode 10 of my Imperfect Knitting Life, my little space where I talk about my knitting, my often unfinished projects and my mill. I've got a couple of other things I'm going to talk to you about as well, which I, I sometimes do about things that are happening in my life. Um, but today I've even got a few acquisitions, so I'm going to put that in. So welcome. Um, if you don't subscribe, please subscribe. That would be lovely. Thumbs ups really help and love looking at your comments. So let me just get into the podcast or vlog as my uh, dear friend Hannah keeps reminding me. It's not a podcast, it's a vlog. But anyway, here we go. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is um, my works in progress and I've got a couple of those. Um, one is the Utivist which um, even though it's been worn, uh, warm I've been able to do some of it. There were a couple of cooler days where it rained and I sat down. I was actually feeling quite unwell though, for a day or so and really decided I would just rest and in that time just watched a bit of telly and did some knitting which is not really something I do for long periods of the day this time of the year because it's still quite warm. So it's the Utivist. So let me get that out and give it give you a show. So for those of you who've watched before you'll know that I'm doing this Utivist in Plotulopi which is um, a pattern by Helene Magnusson um, who is an Icelandic knitter. I don't even know if she lives in Iceland anymore but she has a Facebook page as well if anybody wants to have a look at that. And so I'm doing this jacket. What I must say is I think I've made it too small but well if it's too small for me it'll fit somebody that's all I know. But I'm going to finish it off anyway because look how that hood fits on that woman. My hood doesn't fit like that, but I can show you what the hood looks like. So it's knitted in Plotulopi, and you could do two strands of the Plotulopi, or she does one strand of the Plotulopi and some other um, lace weight yarn. What I haven't done is, I did not want the little flower on the hat. This is not me, so I haven't done that. So just hang on a second, I'm going to put it on for you to have a look at. It is a little bit, like I say, a little bit small, but I'm just going to work with it for the moment because I've got so much of this yarn that I'm pretty sure I could make at least one more, probably two. Whoops! Look at this. Okay. This is what I've done so far, and this is how I know it's too small. It just isn't long enough at the back here. Fits okay. So this bit here, the steak, I'll be cutting that up all the way up to here and having a zip in it. So what I've managed to do is I've done the hood with a little peak on. Look at the peak. It's ugly, I think. It needs to be way bigger, but it's, it's what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish it off and just see where we're at. And if nothing else, I'm pretty sure it will fit underneath my down jacket and as two layers it's going to keep me super, super warm. So. I do love the peak. The way that you knit up the neck here and getting the little um, hood is really quite clever because it's a bit like doing a sock. So you sort of doing a lot of short rows along here. And well, you're actually picking up um, stitches, not picking up, knitting stitches together to actually create a bit like a, a sock gusset. And then you've got this little peak hood. So I think that's quite effective. Um, and now I'm back down onto the sleeve which was easy to pick up. When you get to the elbow you do short row shaping on the elbow and then you knit it right down and then you have a little hole for the finger. So I'll see what that's like. I mean I've got short sleeves on. This is next to my skin. I know that for a lot of people that wouldn't work but for me it's fine. It's not irritating, although I haven't worn it for hours and got really hot and sweaty in it. Let me just take my glasses off so I can take this off. And yeah, so it's too small. I don't know who it could fit. I'm trying to think who I know that would like it. Maybe in my family. Maybe, oh, I don't know, I'll ask, see who it fits. But I don't think I'm going to end up wearing this because it's just 
actually that's a lie I will end up wearing it I think I'm going to take it to the States with me just in case when we go hiking it's cold and I like I said I can stick it under my little down jacket so that is my Uchi vest I will put up the I'm not going to talk a lot about it because I have actually talked about it a lot before but it is an update on my progress and I'm actually quite pleased with that in terms of how the knitting's going and I feel like this is just going to be a practice run for the one that I'm going to um, that I'm going to end up with. That's for me. I might even end up doing different colours because I've got a lot of the um, let loopy that I can choose different colours as well. Um, but it's actually a really nice knit, and it's a very very clever pattern. I would highly recommend this pattern to other people. Um, like I say, I would like to have it longer over my bottom a little bit more. Um, but yeah super duper pattern and in fact I honestly think that I could probably use some of my chunkier yarn that I seem to be um, churning out of the mill at the moment and use that on an Uchi vest. Um, I didn't knit a gauge I didn't knit a gauge swatch but I'm not sure if it's actually knitting to gauge or not or if I've just made it a couple of sizes too small or I've just grown since last winter I suspect it's the last but anyway too bad right so that is the Utivus I'll put the details in the comments below and um, move on with my next um, whip so remember I made the little magnolia uh, mini for Laura well I am doing one for her sister who is three nearly four and that is actually knitted up I don't know why a lot quicker so I've done the um, yoke, all the increases in the yoke. Every time you do it, it just gets a little bit quicker and easier, I think. And I'm basically down to um, the lace part, and I'm going to start that soon. And then they will literally be sort of matchy-matchy in their outfits. Um, I know I said I probably would not use my yarn for a magnolia, but actually they have this really nice... Uh, magnolia um, pattern that is magnolia at the top and that's actually a chunky yarn and I I did buy it because I thought don't keep your options closed with magnolia you never know <laughs> I could use it for the um, knitted in yarn I could use it for some of my homespun yarn I even thought of mixing a little bit of um, silk mohair or mohair silk with it so we'll we'll just see what happens I'm not not too sure I'll just see what gauge is like um, if I do a bit of a swatch up and see what comes up for that so those are really my two actual whips and um, I do have a plan for something so you know how much I do like these um, pure joy the pure joy shawl so the pure joy I've done it before and I've knit it once, twice for other people um, and now I decided I was going to make one for myself and I love this, there's this company in, in uh, New Zealand called Prosper Yarn and you know I don't care you could make yarn, you can dye your own yarn but I am sure that you'll always see yarn that other people make or dye or whatever that you just can't resist. Some people say that collecting yarn is a completely different hobby to knitting yarn. So I decided I would make myself um, the Pure Joy Shawl. And then I got this colour. So this is from that company Prosper Yarn, which is in Auckland. And they've been affected um, by the flooding um, with the cyclone and trying to still operate a business. And so I thought, you know what? I might not be buying a lot but I'm going to get a couple of skeins of their lovely yarn and make my pure, pure joy shawl out of that. So this is actually a 70% merino and 30% linen. It's a four ply fingering yarn. Um, it's two women there. I'll put a link below to their website and they dye their own yarn. And um, I must say I did actually buy some at a um, wool fest and I think it was Wolf. No, it was actually the one in Hamilton. Can't remember. Can't remember what it's called. That one, the Tron, Tron Fest or something like that. I can't remember. But um, the two skeins that I got actually.
actually didn't match because I made a pop shawl for a friend and she was absolutely fabulous. She completely sent me another one to match it and I just was so impressed with the customer service. So I'm often having a little look at what they've got. So I bought this. It was $42 but it really honestly is just, look at that, super duper. Can't wait to see how it knits up. And I'm very determined that this is going to be mine. It might be um, a holiday knit or I might get it done before I go. I've got absolutely no idea. But it is recommending a 2.5 to a 3.25 needle, which is a 1 to 3 US. And 100 grams is 466 meters. Now, as you know, for the Pure Joy shawl, or as you know if you've watched me before, you need two different um, yarns and she didn't do any multicolors in this merino linen blend. She did other blends um, but I really wanted to have the same and the reason why was because it's 466 meters which means I won't have to play yarn chicken. I'm pretty sure I'll have plenty plenty um, for this pattern so I thought I'm going to get a neutral. I'll show you the neutral that I did get. So it's called Bach Organic Merino and I got that neutral there. But like I say I was super inspired, really really inspired by my beautiful dahlia. I've forgotten the name of it but I did look it up. I'll pop it in here because my friend Anna in Tassie she um, asked me the name of it and I, uh, I eventually tracked down um, where I bought it from. So at the back here is this gorgeous dahlia and I dyed that neutral wall trying to pick out the colours of the dahlia. Do you think it's worked? I think it's worked. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So that is going to go with that for my pure joy shawl and I'm you know it's just got a little bit of yellow in a little bit of green and I mean I didn't have I don't know what cut I don't know what dye she uses but I'm using the um, landscape dyes and I thought that was a reasonable match or at least it sort of fits in very nicely so I'm very very happy with that just going to pop them back up there because I just think that's a little piece of art all on its own. That's gorgeous. I do want to show you this little pottery thing I got at an op shop and I love it to bits because my little, um, well I love it to bits because I think it's just the most beautiful organic little piece of pottery and you can see it's a mother and she's got a little baby in there that she's um, cradling. And my little um, granddaughter Freddie went, Mama. So I don't know if she thought it was her mama or she just recognized that it was a mama with a baby, but she loved it too. Pretty special. I love op shopping. Can't wait to go thrift shopping in America. Woo! -hoo! Very excited about that. All right, so um, those are my whips or my planned whips. Um, I have a couple of acquisitions, so one of them is this, which is a cone of, oops, mohair silk. It's from a company called oh, DEA Yarns, so that's a neutral, and you know, I actually thought I could dye them up so that they match some of my yarn and knit things double, because that's a thing at the moment, isn't it, where you knit one... Um, one yarn of a say a double knit or a fingering ply and then you add your little bit of mohair in there or I could dye something up like I did with the um, I'm going to call that my magnolia my magnolia dye because it, I feel like it sort of matches that and it was a bit of an investment because that's 400 grams but 400 grams of 75% mohair and 25% silk that's a good investment and I think it'll last me a little while and in fact I still have um, Adrian's magnolia to make and that's going to use that color so I need to get 
get that sort of um, wound off so that I can get some of that ready to start her, her top. So that's my acquisition in terms of yarn and I bought this book. I'm trying to inspire myself to have a little go at stranded knitting. So it's called Strands of Joy. It's a lane. I don't know if you say laney or lane. I would say lane. Um, Anna Johanna or Johanna. I'm not sure how you pronounce her name. Anna Johanna. Anna Johanna. So it's a beautiful book. It's got so many gorgeous patterns in there. Very inspirational. And a lot of that um, in here actually is the two strands. So one of um, a fingering or one of a double knit. And then you add a mohair to it. So I think that I will be able to utilize that quite well. And I think Judy's going to enjoy having a little look at it too. She loves her color work. So there might be something in there that she fancies as well. And that's the joy of uh, knitting books and stuff like that. I'm a little bit more reluctant if I buy a pattern to share that pattern because I, you know, I feel like, um, you know, that's somebody's bread and butter. I suppose a book's bread and butter, but we all share books and that seems to be way more acceptable. And yeah, so that's my acquisition. What else? No more acquisitions. No more acquisitions. So, um, I have been thinking about the garden recently actually because summer gardening has been a complete and utter disaster. My tomatoes have been going mouldy. Um, what has grown is um, a plant called kamo kamo, which is a type of squash, but more like a spaghetti squash, or if you live in South Africa, something like a gem squash, or if you live in England, a little bit more like a marrow. I love it. It's delicious. But, you know, when you've got eight of these massive um, plant, uh, you know, veggies, there's only so much of that you can eat, and it's not really a vegetable that you can um, freeze. But the rest of the garden has been pretty sad and pathetic. Actually, that's not true. The passion fruit's done really well. What else has done well? Ah, the fig tree's doing really, really well. I did get some apples off the tree, didn't get lots. Totally missed out on the nashi pears. Didn't have a single apricot on three trees this year. Um, two plums survived my one tree. So yeah, it's been a pretty sad and pathetic year. Which is ironic because in the same way that I put the water tank in preparing for a drought, I did a lovely um, permaculture course through Kuanga Gardens or Kuanga Garden Institute. And I bought a whole package of um, videos to see and it, it really does everything from you know, how to grow your soil, um, growing your seedlings. So I, I bought this master package, which, you know, just had so many different things. Like I say, the videos, um, and there's a master chart of how you work out what you're going to plant, blah, blah, blah. I invested a lot of time and money in making, growing seedlings. And honestly, I think I planted like nine or ten pumpkins. Had none, nothing's come out of those at all. Um, I planted garlic, that all got rust. It's been a disastrous year in the garden, but I thought, you know what, maybe before I go away to America, I could start some seedlings and get those in the ground and they might have a little bit of a, a start with um, autumn coming because really have no idea what winter's going to be like, but the price of vegetables with this weather has gone up so much. Um, literally more than double some of the vegetables to what they were this time last year so somebody wrote a sign uh, wrote over somebody's sign that they put up greedy farmers and i don't think the farmers are greedy i think they're literally a lot of them struggling to um have something to sell this year so i understand that they're charging a lot of money i just um can't really afford to spend a heap of money like that i have to you have to spend it I've just noticed a massive difference in the price of our um, shopping and I just can't imagine how people who earn less than I are, are managing food-wise. So, 
yeah, that's a bit of depressing talk, but it's the reality of where we are at the moment. Um, there's still so much going on with the cleanup down in Hawke's Bay. Um, there's plenty of people, I think, that still don't have power. They're still trying to clean out houses. There's, it's going to be months, maybe years, for some people to get coming right. So that's a big thing that's going on for them. I, on the other hand, have got some good plans coming up. Um, I'm, I think I've got one, two, three weekends before I leave for the States. And so this weekend I'm going to have my grandchildren do lots of stuff with the grandchildren. So today after school I'm picking Laura up from school and she's going to spend the night with me and her thing is she loves to check the bees with me so I think what we'll do this afternoon is we'll check the bees when we get home and um, her big thing is like getting the smoker going I think she kind of over smokes the bees but um, she just loves the whole thing so we'll get that done check the bees put in some varroa treatment and just have a you know see how they're doing and then I'm going to buy some little kitty knitting needles and teach her how to knit. She's seven years old and she really wants to learn how to knit. So I think tonight's the night. We're going to sit down and get some stitches going for her and see how she goes with that. And maybe in 20, 30 years she'll say, oh, I learned to knit when I was seven years old with my grandma. And that will be, I didn't do it for years, so let's just see if that is the start of um, a big adventure for her when she's older. You never know where the fashion is going to go with crafts and um, knitting and I hope knitting is something that is a skill and an art that never dies. So that's this weekend starting with um, Laura today. Tomorrow morning Laura and I are going to drive to a, a little town halfway between Cambridge where Claire Marie lives and our place called Tiro and meet her there and pick up Lila who is going to come and spend her first night alone yeah her first night alone with us so that's very exciting and um, yeah so I'm gonna have a little one-to-one -one with Lila her, um, Laura, Laura will go home with her family tomorrow afternoon and then on Sunday Lila's mum Claire Marie is gonna come over and pick Lila up and hang out with the family and I'm going to go with Willow and we're going to go to a um, pottery morning. I want to make a little gift to take to, the, to America with me and I, uh, for my son because I did make him a cup when I did a pottery class, a mug, and then one of the grandchildren dropped it. So it's really hard to think what to take when you're going over to the States because quite frankly, what do we have here that you don't have there? So I'm trying to do much more personalized things and maybe take some sweeties or lollies or candies or whatever from here and take that over and I think there's some chocolate that we get over here that's so delicious that I it's definitely worth taking over although Patrick's always great um, you know going on about all the yummy things that he can get over there we'll see maybe I won't waste the chocolate on them maybe I'll just take it for myself I don't know we'll see so yeah so it's pottery on Sunday then on Monday I'm babysitting Claire Marie's children while she works Tuesday's Freddie and Lila day then Wednesday hopefully I can get into the mill Thursday I'm doing a study day for midwifery and then there's Friday and Saturday of the following weekend Roger and I are driving down to Wellington and on Sunday I am doing something that I can literally say if I had a bucket list I will be ticking that off my bucket list and it is we're doing a one day sneaker workshop at the shoe school in Wellington and I'm going to put the link down there um, underneath the shoe school is somewhere where you go and you custom make your own shoes so they have a variety of um, workshops you can do one day sandal they have a mule workshop they even do like a harness a leather harness or I suppose you can do a vegan harness um, workshop you can do like a I think a four day boot workshop where you make your own shoe lasts and but essentially you learn how to make your own shoes and I have had this on my bucket list for probably three or four or maybe more years and they put up put on a two-for-one 
workshop and I managed to get on there with Roger so he initially wasn't like oh, he didn't really want to, to to make anything at this workshop and I said to him well that's fine you can make me a, a, another pair of sneakers and I'll have two pairs of sneakers but I think he's now had a little rethink and he might just actually make something for himself so we'll we'll wait and see and what happens there so that's that weekend and then the following weekend is literally packing ready for going away and then I'll be off to the States for a month. I'm not really sure if um, I should or if anybody's even interested in me doing a little vlog while I'm there because it's not going to be much about my knitting. I do have a local yarn store I've already sourced for Santa Rosa and oh I thought it was on here. Let me see if I can find it. There was... Oh, maybe it's there. Nope. Oh, no, no, it's here. Oh. Called Castaway in Santa Rosa. I mean, I don't know if anybody who comes from there can recommend it, but it looks amazing. It says something like 4,000 square feet. Yeah, over 4,000 square feet in a beautiful 1906 brick loft building. And there's lots of gadgets and bits and pieces even if I didn't buy wool I am so sure I could buy some gadgets or bags or needles or something because quite frankly you need to support local yarn stores all over the world um, keep them going because we can't just have online all the time so I'm going to check that one out and I have something that might be coming to fruition but I don't want to talk about it and jinx it now I might talk about it next time which I'm hopefully going to have one more podcast or video vlog before I go and I'll talk about it then if it if it comes to to fruition but if not all good as well oh I did miss out one of my things after the shoe school is actually not last weekend after the shoe school the next weekend is actually a spinning weekend with Marja craft which I'm very excited about my friend Judy's doing a tweed workshop we're going to learn about working with linen Pat old who's you know an absolute expert in spinning she's Marja craft um, owns Marja craft and knows so much about um, fleece and wool and spinning she is um, going to be doing a workshop as well and I, Marja Craft are, like I say, running that group and I actually thought I would ask my sister if I can try out her Marja Craft spinning wheel because I haven't ever used one so I will have a go at that um, in some ways I feel a bit of a fraud because I don't, I don't actually think my hand spinning is very good but at the end of the day it's all about community as well and getting to know people and just adding to the skills so I'm gonna go open mind just have lots of fun rooming in with my sister I think and it's a Papa Moa which is by the beach so maybe we'll have a couple of beach walks as well and I'm really looking forward to that so that's actually the weekend before the the one where I'm prepping to go so it's grandchildren shoe school spinning weekend and then prep weekend so yeah, that's all what's happening there. I really wish I wouldn't say so so many times, but it's too bad. That's me. This is my little list because you know I've got a water beetle brain and I'm trying to stay focused, which in some ways I feel like when I'm focused, it's not as natural. I don't feel like this is a natural because I'm I've got that list and I keep looking at it and I otherwise normally I would just be talking about this, flitting off to that and I feel like it's a more natural flow of how things go and yes maybe at the end of it I've gone oh I didn't talk about this I didn't talk about that I rambled on about this other thing but I feel like it's a bit more natural so I'm not even sure if I'm going to be using lists very often so that's what I wanted to talk about for um, well my holiday preparation the one thing I do want to say is um, I had to get a, um, well it's not a visa, an, ex an exclusion visa thing, I can't remember what it's called, ESTA or something, and um, I applied for that. What a palaver, because I had to remember every country I'd lived in, 
well, that's easy enough, I know, but the dates that you live there, I had to remember citizenships, which I've had more than one citizenship. I've, this is now, I was born Zambian, which was a colony of Britain. Uh, Britain wouldn't give me a passport, so I went from there to South Africa, from South Africa to New Zealand. I had to put all those dates down, and what a mission. Um, but fortunately, it's all been approved, so I don't have to worry about that now. I just think, Patrick says when you go there, you get fingerprinted when you go in, which I said, well, it's probably a good thing, because if I get murdered, they'll be able to find me, unless they take off my fingerprints. Have I repeated this anywhere? I hope not. I'll have to find out, because I don't really watch my old podcast, but I feel like I've said this somewhere else. But anyway... Um, and I'm also wondering, how am I going to go an entire month without seeing red? Because I don't know if other people have realized this, but dogs don't seem to look at humans on camera. Because we've tried to get, when, we, when Jet was alive, we tried to get Jet to talk to Patrick, and she just was never interested. Now, if she, heard, if she hears a bark, bark of a dog, she's up there looking at the camera and really, you know, interested. Same with the telly, but for human talks, they just don't seem to be interested at all. So I think probably I'm just going to have to miss her the entire month and have a great reunion when we get back and hope she doesn't pee on me because she'll be so excited. At least that's a one-way street. It won't be two-way. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to miss Red for that entire month. Now, we're on to the mill. I feel like this has been a long time. I don't even know how long it is. But the mill, I have produced yarn. More than one lot of yarn. So you saw my blue, steely, grey fleece. And since then, I, um, with Judy, we made... Did I do it with Judy or do it myself? I think I did, may have done it myself, but I made this yarn which is still the Su South Suffolk, or Suffolk Down, and that is the um, flax colour um, mixed with a white. And then at the weekend, on Saturday um, last week, my daughter-in-law, Ollie, came and we literally took this purple, or as little Laura would say, Waipororo, which is purple in Māori, and we took it from fluffed up picked fleece all the way through to yarn in a morning and so we ended up with I think it was 650 grams of this and that took about five and a half hours so that was a lot of work for two people to get that but we did it and hopefully over time I'll be able to do it a bit quicker because the other thing of course is I really struggle to run more than one machine at once even when there's two of us at the moment and I did try it for small portions of time but then we'd end up with problems and so it was just easy to, to do it one bit at a time but I am really happy that I actually do have some fleece from start to finish I thought that was going to be a very very long time coming and then I got super cocky and we started putting through this other um, fleece that I was given and it was so soft and lustrous and I put it through and the carding machine started making terrible noises and I think it had actually been overloaded because it was really fluffy and then it was coming out like candy floss at the other end and we could hardly control it and I know that Ju Judy would have said to me, no, there's way too much on there. So I pulled it back. But in the meantime, it started making these like, gunk. I don't know, the chain was like, gunk. Um, and I literally haven't had a moment. It sounds like, you know, BS, but, you know, I haven't had the time to go down and get underneath the machine and see if it's just literally a jam. I know that um, Amanda and uh, Peg at Junction Fibre did say that their um, carding machine would regularly get um, jammed if they didn't, you know, get it cleaned out every week. And I just think with that super fluffy fleece, it probably is what's happened to it. But I haven't inspected that yet. And you can tell from my weekend and my plans, um, I'm not actually sure when I'm going to get in there. Hopefully, 
Wednesday next week. I will spend the entire day in the mill. So let's see how that goes. So I've got all of that. Um, oh, and this was a little end run, which I thought was quite cute. So I might use that as a little colorway or color work um, and then it's got more than one color in it it's so all the little ends which is basically cream and gray and yellow and green all mixed in that one it's not very much but it, I think it's enough for a little bit of color work especially on a little person's top so I'm, I'm sure that over time I'm just going to accumulate heaps of this sort of stuff um, somebody did ask me if I was going to sell my yarn well I'm going to have to sell it at some point I think because there's only so much you can use and I'm just going to see how it goes and maybe just put up small batches and sell it as a small batch and whatever's there is there and you know I don't really think like the purple I mean who's going to want to buy that I really did it just because I wanted to see if I could do it from start to finish and also I do think one of the grandchildren might like that in the purple and I'll do something with it it's not going to go to waste I did watch Fruity Knitting. I don't know if anybody watched the latest Fruity Knitting, but um, she did an interview with a woman, I can't remember her name, but Mercier, I think, was the name of her company. And she does the most amazing um, crochet, and it was really inspiring me. I actually did think that I could um, put together some yarn and maybe sign on to one of her courses and do um, one of her blankets. So that's in the back of my mind for one of my down the track projects that I might do but collecting lots of different colors and just collecting the the, the yarn um, and I've got plenty plenty more of the South Suffolk so I can make lots of matching yarn to 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 use um, just takes time right so more about the mill is I've been putting stuff through the pin drafter which seems to work for a while and then it goes all frothy and curly and I might need to have a little chat with Amanda and um, Peg and see if they might be able to help me problem shoot that a little bit because I don't know why it does that if I leave, turn it off leave it come back it seems to come right again so it might be something as simple as not enough humidity or too much static not sure but I just don't feel like it's working perfectly still and is a work in progress so that's the mill getting the hang of putting the um, yarn up on the spinner was really um, happy with my progress with that of course there were times of frustration and I think some of that is it's it's not necessarily my skill getting up it's the quality of the roving that I'm trying to put through the the spinner and even Judy said to me she said it's not very even and, and it does make a difference if it's more even putting it up and then also getting your spindle and your roller um, numbers correct to put enough twist on the um, roving so that it makes well not only makes a decent yarn just enough twist in it so that it doesn't break so that's still a big learning curve and I've got some reading to do because Judy as she does um, researched it a little bit and sent me some information on twist and um, spindle twist and stuff like that so I need to have a look at that I haven't done it yet I've only got so many hours in the day and I have been doing midwifery as well so it's definitely taking time to get to where I want to be but I am moving things forward and I'm really really happy with how things are moving forward um, and very inspired by other people so I did watch um, a few of you sent me a message and on YouTube and even on messenger about country calendar which is a program in New Zealand and talking about tally ho carders which are down south in the South Island and I was really inspired by what a what a big operation um, they have and just what they do so they do a lot of carding I don't think they take I don't think they have a pin draft or a spinner but she does a lot of carding dyeing um, selling um, selling uh, fleece and a carded um, fleece carded wool around the, the the country and I I know that I have actually a few years ago bought some tally ho fleece and um, 
and from a from a show and used it and it was lovely so yes I had a look at that and that was really interesting I did also see that there is near Hastings which is in our affected area from the flooding that there is a, an alpaca outfit which have a set of the Belfast mini commercial mill and they take alpaca fleece all the way to yarn so um, that was really interesting to look at as well and I'd love to go and have a little farm tour down south and I will do that sometime but obviously that's going to be in a wee while um, and check them out too so you know I'm not the only spinning place that can take it all the way to yarn there's definitely one other outfit at least that does a, a mini commercial mill and it's them I will um, yeah I'll have a little look at see if I put it down below because I'm you know don't know if it's competition or not and I don't quite frankly don't care I just want to be able to promote um, the product for other people as well so I'll put that down below I cannot remember their name um, but I had a quick look at it this morning because I thought I wonder if there's anybody else doing this and I looked up Belfast Mini Mill because I wanted to have a look at their washer um, because they're, they're produced in Canada and they ship around the world but I was just like how much would it cost to get something like that shipped over here I've um, purchased this week a Califont to heat the water because I, my Califont here clearly doesn't get the water hot enough um, to really scour clean the, 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 the fleece I saw that um, down south tally ho she was literally stamping on her fleece and was washing it in big like plastic I think we call them fish buckets no it's not a fish bucket well um, like trays that you'd put veggies and stuff in and um, washed it through like that but yeah I'm still working on all the different aspects and getting a nice little wash station is still on my big wish list there's only so much we can get done and hopefully in a year's time I won't be working on these things I'll literally just be working on the yarn so that's the mill that's where we're at, we're at with the mill what I do have is um, a little video which I'm either going to put separately because I feel like I've rambled and yabbled on for such a long time that it might be too long to go at the end of this video or I might do one of those little speedy up um, super fast and put a little bit of music to it while I practice my iMovies so thank you so much for persisting and staying with me if you have managed to get to the end of this I really appreciate it and I will see you hopefully in a couple of weeks and I hope that you're all very very well and um, that you're starting to enjoy little bits of spring if you're in the northern hemisphere or getting little good bouts of weather if you're here and have been you know affected by the cyclone and just starting to piece things back together so take care see you in a couple of weeks bye Take this happy greeting. <laughs> We're not going in the castle. She likes to get in that. You gonna hop in?
Yeah, let me just pop this up here. Can you come here? 